So it brings me to the second half of this short talk. And it comes from this little book, The, the Big Three, again. Doctor, do you have any patients with migraine and headache, DVT, recurrent miscarriage or pregnancy loss, memory loss, or young strokes? Th these are all features of the Hughes syndrome, or the media call this sticky blood. We gave it the title antiphospholipid syndrome, now known as APS, but it's not strictly true. It's not antiphospholipid. It's antiphos. It's as usual more complicated. It's an antibody against phospholipid protein complex. What are the main pointers of the Hughes syndrome? Number one, teenage migraine so, so important and so common. A tendency to thrombosis, as in Our Lady from Boston. Uh, thrombosis, interestingly, in arteries as well as uh, veins. Strokes, memory loss, TIAs, recurrent miscarriage, and cold circulation, blotchiness, levido. These are all pointers if you're looking for this diagnosis. Other clues to diagnosis, and I'm going to mention these this afternoon, ataxia, giddiness, visual disturbances, atypical multiple sclerosis, and I want to spend some time coming back to that because some of these patients are wrongly labeled as MS. They can get uh, venous ulceration. Uh, very occasionally, not commonly, they can have low platelets. Or more commonly, borderline platelet counts, 110,000, very much more common. I, I mentioned that they get arterial. Remember, other clotting disorders like factor V Leiden is venous. But these patients tragically can get arterial thrombosis, and they can get heart murmurs. Remember that. If you look at patients with DVTs attending your busy outpatient clinic, and there have been a number of studies, up to 30% are positive for antiphospholipid antibodies. So really worth screening DVT for sticky blood. The biggest positive, and I'm going to spend a little time on this, is in pregnancy. What happens, we think, predominantly is that the sludging of sticky blood or the platelets adhering to each other, whatever the mechanism, affects the placenta, the placenta in the brain, very commonly. And the baby doesn't get enough circulation, fetus, fetal death, and you get a miscarriage. And this is one of the commonest causes. In fact, it's the commonest treatable cause of recurrent miscarriage. And it's, it's lovely. Once a year, we have a party now in St. Thomas's Hospital for women who've had recurrent miscarriages. Some of these women, 12, 14 miscarriages and they have successful pregnancies on either aspirin or heparin, which I'm going to speak about later. And so we have this party every year, which is, which is quite fun for some. It's jelly and ice cream and vomiting and, you know, usual stuff. What about the tests in Hughes syndrome? Well, unfortunately, you need two tests, possibly three. You have to tick two boxes because not all patients have anticardiolipid antibodies. 10, 20 percent are negative for ACL, but they have this other dreadful test called the lupus anticoagulant, which is not lupus, it's not an anticoagulant, but the name has stuck. And so you need to tick both boxes in case you miss some patients. And in the last decade, there's a new test called anti-beta-2. This is a protein very much involved, which I'll mention briefly in a minute. What if the test is positive? Well, anticardiolipin predicts 80% of cases. Lupus anticoagulant, 30 to 40% of cases. And the lupus anticoagulant test is one of these horrible uh, hematology tests where they add in bits of snake venom and uh, pepper and salt and, you know, all that stuff. So the tests should be done together if you're ticking the boxes and looking for this syndrome. 
What's the history, uh, briefly, of the antiphospholipid syndrome? Well, as you've heard from the chairman, it was in 1983 that we wrote up our first big series. And this, the October 83 paper was called Thrombosis, Abortion, Cerebral Disease. Even then, to us, this was central. And the lupus anticoagulant. We described in that year, um, I think it was 170 patients. And these are the highlights for us. They got arterial disease. One of our first patients was played for Leicester Rugby Club, a very major player, and he had an arterial thrombosis and lost his leg. Neurological features, career, movement disorders, and seizures. Think about that. Levido reticularis, which I'm going to show some of these pictures. Recurrent pregnancy loss, borderline platelet count. But one thing that we found very, very important, and it's a lesson that really perhaps is hard to get across, that this actually, although it overlaps with lupus, is distinct from lupus. Many people out there in Melbourne walking around with Hughes syndrome who do not have lupus. We also set up the assay for antiphospholipid antibodies and published that, as you heard, in the November Lancet, the antiphospholipid or anticardiolipin test.